Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm back with 10 all new patriotic and 4th of July decor DIYs. All of today's projects are super easy to create and are all really affordable. I really hope that you enjoy today's video and get some inspiration for your 4th of July decor this year. If you do enjoy today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Now let's go ahead and jump right into today's projects. For the first DIY today, I'm going to be using two of these wooden crates from Dollar Tree. One of mine is broken, but I'm going to be putting that side of it on the back. The first thing I'm going to be doing is painting both of my crates with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, and I only had to do one coat of paint on these. Then once the paint was dry, I wanted them to have a rustic look, so I took some of my Java Color chalk paint from Folk Art and just dry brushed that around all of the edges of both of my crates. For this project, I'm also going to be using three pieces of scrap wood. Two of them I have cut down to the same size, and those longer ones are going to go on each side of my crate. And then I also have a little bit shorter piece of wood, and that's going to go on the front. All of them I'm painting with that Waverly paint in the color plaster. And then once that was dry, I wanted all of these to match my crates. So I took that same Java colored paint and then just dry brushed that around all of the edges of all three of my pieces of wood. Next, I'm attaching both of my crates together. I'm just placing some hot glue on the top of one of the crates and then placing the second one on top of that to attach them. And then I'm also attaching the two longer pieces of scrap wood and I did those right in the center on the sides of both sides of my crate. Once I have those attached, I'm then moving on to that third piece of a wood and I am going to be using this firework stencil from Amazon and I will have this linked down in my description box. I'm using just the bottom word on this stencil and I'm getting it all in the center of my piece of a wood and then I'm using some painter's tape on each side of it to make sure that my stencil is secure and doesn't move around while I'm painting. Then for the paint color that I'm using, it is from Folk Art and it's in the color Nautical and I'm using a Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint. Then once the paint was all dry, I removed my stencil. I'm going to be adding a mini banner on the front of my crates. So to create that, I'm using this blue and red star ribbon from Joanne Fabrics. I wanted them to have a V shape. So for three of the blue ones, I cut a V shape and then two of the red ones, I did a V shape. And these are going to be my banner. So for the banner, I wanted to attach those pieces on this blue jute that I got from Dollar Tree. So I started by just creating a really small knot on one end of the jute and then I hot glued that on the top left hand side of my crate. Then I just measured to see how I want my banner to be like swagged across the front. I cut that down to size and then made a knot on the other side of the jute and then hot glued that on the top right hand side of my crate. I then started attaching all of my little ribbon pieces. I went blue, red, blue, red, blue, and I just attached those to that top jute piece along the front of the crate using some hot glue. I then wanted to add some detail to the wood piece that says fireworks, so I took some of that red and blue jute from Dollar Tree and I used one piece of each. I wrapped that around each side of the wood piece next to the word firework and I just secured the ends of the jute along the back side of the wood piece. I'm now going to be creating two firework mini bundles and for this I just took a dowel rod and cut it down into six different pieces that are all the same size. Then for two of the pieces I painted those with the Waverly paint in plaster. Then for two more of the pieces I painted those with my nautical color paint and then for the two remaining pieces I painted those with my Tuscan red color from Folk Art. And then I'm going to be putting my bundles together. So I took my red one and then I used some hot glue on the side of it to attach the blue color. And then I just used some hot glue on the front of those two pieces to attach my white piece. Then to add a little bit of detail to these, I used a piece of jute and I wrapped it right around the center of them. And then to make sure that that piece of jute stays nice and secure, I just tied a double knot. I did the exact same thing with the three remaining pieces to create a second bundle. 
I'm then using two of these unfinished wood stars from Dollar Tree and I'm painting them with my Tuscan red color. Then I wanted to attach them on each side of the word firework that I had stenciled on earlier. So I just used some hot glue to attach the stars over top of those jute pieces. Then I'm taking that piece of a wood and I'm attaching it to the top of the two pieces of wood that I attached to my crate earlier on. And I just used some hot glue to do that. And then I wanted to start adding some little detail pieces. So I'm using one of these mini glass containers from Dollar Tree. And I just removed the cork since I'm not gonna be needing it for this project. And then I took two of these little berry stems. I'm gonna be using a white one and then a red one. I just cut them down really small. And I thought these would kind of look like little red and white flowers. So once I have them cut down, I just place them inside of the glass container. Next, I'm gonna be creating another little detail piece. I just took this small piece of a wood. This is from the scrap wood pack that you can get from Dollar Tree, and I painted it with the nautical color paint. Then once that was dry, I wanted to stencil on some numbers, and I'm gonna be using the numbers on this stencil seven and five so i just place those over top of the piece of wood and then i use the waverly paint and plaster with a dollar tree stencil brush to stencil on the numbers seven and five for 75 and then since the stencil pack does not have a scent symbol i just freehand that with that same uh, plaster color paint with a really small paintbrush I then glued that piece on the right hand side right underneath the stars and then I hot glued my little mini glass container on the top right hand side of my crate and then I hot glued both of my little firework bundles on the left top hand side of my crate. And then for the very last detail I did end up adding a small American flag on the left hand side. And this is what it looks like all finished. It was super easy to do and I think it turned out so cute. It goes perfect on a tiered tray or just sitting on a tabletop like I have here. Moving right along into DIY number two. For this one, I'm gonna be using this round piece of wood that I got from, I believe, Michaels. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing to it is painting the front and back side of this piece with the Waverly paint and the color plaster. Then for the entire side of this piece, I'm gonna be painting it with my Tuscan red chalk paint from Folk Art. Another piece I'm going to be using to create my design today is this steak. This one did come off of a Dollar Tree sign. It had been in my craft stash for a while and I thought it would be perfect for today's project. I'm painting that with that same Tuscan red chalk paint as well. Next I'm using this stencil from Amazon. This one it did come in the same pack of stencils from the one that I used in DIY number one. And I'm just placing it in the center of my wood piece and I'm using some painters tape around all of the sides just to make sure that it's nice and secure while I'm painting. I'm also going to be using two different colored paints so I'm just taking some painters tape and I'm placing it over all of the stripes around the edges of where the stars are so that I don't mess up and get any paint where I don't want it to be. So for all of the stars on this piece, I'm painting them with my nautical colored paint from Folk Art and I'm using a Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint. Then once that was dry, I removed the painter's tape from the top over the stripes and then I'm gonna be taking some more painter's tape and placing those over where the stars are so that I don't get any of the red paint that I'm gonna be using on where I just painted this blue paint. And then the red color that I'm using is Tuscan Red from Folk Art. And again, just using my Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint. Then once the paint was all dry, I removed all of the painter's tape and the stencil. And then for the very last step in this project, I used some hot glue to attach the wood stake to my wood circle. And this is what the piece looks like all finished. It was a really simple and easy, affordable project. And I ended up just placing mine in one of my planners on my front porch. Next is DIY number three. For this project, I'm using one of these signs from Dollar Tree. This one obviously is from back in the fall, but I'm finally using it today. The first thing I'm doing is just removing the middle part out of the frame because I will not be using it. 
And then I'm painting the entire frame with my Waverly chalk paint and plaster. Then I'm just taking some pliers and I'm removing the beads and the staples from the back side of the frame. For this project, I'm also using seven popsicle sticks that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and I'm painting all seven of them with my nautical collar chalk paint from Folk Art. And then once the paint has dried, I did want these to have a little bit of a rustic look, so I took some of my plaster color paint and I just very lightly dry brushed that color around all of the edges. Then it was time to cut down the popsicle sticks so that they would fit inside of the back of the frame. So I just measured those out and then took some scissors and cut off the ends of the popsicle sticks. Then once I had the first one cut down, I just used that as a guide to continue cutting down the remaining six sticks. I then used hot glue on the inside of the frame to attach all seven of my popsicle sticks. Once those were all attached, I then wanted to add a little bit of distressing to the outside of the frame. So I took some of my Java colored paint and just very lightly dry brushed that, focusing mainly around the edges and the outside of the frame. Now I'm taking the beads that I originally had taken off in the beginning and I'm gonna be painting these, but I thought it would be a lot easier if I were to just stick the bead on the end of an old paintbrush so that they would stay in place. And then I painted all of them with my Tuscan red paint. And then once the paint was on there, but while it was still wet, I took a piece of paper towel and wiped that paint off to give it more of a stained look. Now I'm stringing the beads onto two pieces of jute. Once I got the first bead strung on, I just made a knot on the end of the jute to hold it into place so that it doesn't fall off. And then in between each bead that I'm putting on, I'm making a knot. So I would do a bead, then make a knot, then do a bead, make a knot, and I continued that until I had all of my beads attached. I'm also using nine of these unfinished wood stars, and these ones are from Michaels. I'm painting the tops of all of the stars with the plaster color paint. Then once the paint has dried, I'm placing them inside of my frame just to get them placed where I want them to be before I start attaching them. And to attach all of the stars, I'm using hot glue. Then for the very last step, I'm just attaching the beads and I'm just using some hot glue on the back side of my frame to attach them. And here is the project all finished. Another super quick and easy project for the 4th of July. I ended up placing mine on one of my hangers on my front porch. Now for DIY number four. For this one, I'm using three wood blocks from Hobby Lobby. Two of them are a little bit taller than the third one, and then I'm also using a small wood frame from Michaels. For the first wood block, I'm painting that with my nautical color chalk paint. Then once the paint was all dry, I'm using this stencil that has a bunch of stars on it, and I'm just placing the stencil over top of the wood piece and then just stenciling the stars using my Waverly paint and plaster on a Dollar Tree stencil brush. I moved that stencil around in different places on the entire block so that I would have stars on all of the sides of the blocks. And then I used some of that same plaster color to distress all of the sides of the block. Then for the second taller block, I'm painting that with my Tuscan red chalk paint. Then for this one, I did want to have stripes on it. So instead of using the painter's tape like I normally would, my painter's tape is a little bit thick. So the only other tape I had that was thinner is this heat tape. So that's what I'm going to be using for my project, but you can use pretty much any tape that's a little bit thinner or the size of stripes that you want to create. So I took my heat tape and I just placed it at the very top of my block and I wrapped it all the way around and then once I had that on I took a second piece of tape and I put it right underneath the first piece of tape and then once I had the second piece on I then put a third piece all the way around underneath the second piece of tape and then I went back and removed the second piece of tape so the second piece was really like a spacer just so I would know exactly where to place my third piece. And then I continued to do that until I had stripes made on the entire block. Once I have all of my tape placed where I need it to be, I'm using the Waverly paint and plaster to paint in all of the spaces that do not have paint on them. 
Then once the paint has completely dried, I remove all of my tape. Then to give this block that distressed look that I like so much, I'm using that same Waverly paint and plaster to go around all of the edges of the block. Next is the third shorter block. This one I'm painting the entire block in the color plaster. And then to add a little bit of the rustic feel to this one, I'm using my Java colored paint and I just very lightly dry brush that around all of the edges of the block. Next, I'm gonna be using some of this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm just measuring it to fit over the front of my block. And then once I had the length all cut down to size, I then cut it a little bit shorter as well. And then I did want the edges to be frayed out so that they looked a little bit more rustic. I know I've said that a lot in this video, but I really do love that look. And then I just hot glued that ribbon right over top of the front of my block. Next, I'm gonna be using these wood letters to spell out USA, and then I'm painting all of them. The U I painted in the Tuscan red color, the S I painted in plaster from Waverly, and then the A I painted in nautical. Then I'm just hot gluing all of the letters going vertically right onto the front of my block over top of the burlap ribbon. Next, I'm using this paper cord. I'm not really sure what this is called, but I did pick it up from Dollar Tree. I cut three pieces that were a couple inches in length, and then I'm just curling those up so that they look like the top of a firework, and then I'm hot gluing those on the tops of all three of my blocks. Now for the base piece on this project, I'm using this mini wooden plaque from Michaels and to stain it, I'm using my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut and I'm just rubbing the wood tint on with an old rag. Then I'm gonna piece everything together. I'm placing the two larger blocks in the back and then the smaller block right in the center and I'm just hot gluing all of them onto the base that I stained. And this is what the project looks like all finished. Another really easy project that would be great to put on a tiered tray, shelf, or a tabletop. Moving right along into DIY number five. For this one, I'm using this unfinished wooden house, and this one is from Hobby Lobby, and I'm gonna be painting the house with the folk art paint in the color nautical. And then I'm also gonna be using three of these mini wooden fences, and these are also from Hobby Lobby. I'm then gonna be taking all of the posts apart. I tried painting them while they were still together, but it was really hard for me to get along the sides of the posts. So it's just easier for me to pop them apart. And then I'm gonna be painting eight of these mini wooden posts with the Tuscan red color from Folk Art. And then I'm gonna be painting seven of them with my Waverly paint and the color plaster. Then for the straight wood pieces that go along the back to hold the fences together, those are also gonna be in the plaster color. After the paint was all dry, I then started piecing back together all of my fence posts, and each post, or each set of posts is five, and I did rotate between the colors. I did red, white, red, white, red for all three sets. Then moving back over to my house, I'm gonna be painting the rooftop of it with that same plaster color. Here you'll see me stenciling on this America word from this stencil. I do actually go back through and change it up a little bit, but I wanted you to see what I'm doing before I start the next step and you wonder why I skipped over steps. So next I'm gonna be um, just hot gluing and attaching the fence post on the bottom of my house underneath the word America. But like I said, I am gonna be switching that out here in just a minute. So what I ended up doing was just painting over where I had stenciled on the word America with that same nautical color paint. And then I ended up using this stencil instead. It says United States of America. I'm obviously not using the bottom portion of the stencil, but I'm just getting the stencil exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm using some painter's tape on the top just to make sure it doesn't move around. And then I'm using that same Waverly paint and plaster to stencil on the words United States of America right above my fence post. Then to add a little bit more of a rustic feel to this, I use the Java colored paint and just really lightly dry brush that around 
all of the wording around all of the fence posts and then the roof of the house. For the last little detail, I'm using one of these wooden stars from Dollar Tree. I'm painting it with a Tuscan red color and then I'm hot gluing that right on top of the roof underneath the chimney. And here's my house all finished. Again, another really easy patriotic decor piece that would be perfect to add to a tiered tray, tabletop, or shelf. Now for DIY number six. For this one, I'm gonna be using three long pieces of scrap wood. And then for these pieces, I'm gonna be using my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut. I used an old paintbrush to paint on the stain or wood tint, and then I used an old rag to wipe away the excess, and I did that for all three pieces of wood on the front sides and the back. I'm also using seven of these unfinished wood stars. These ones I believe are from Michaels, and I'm painting all of the stars with my plaster color paint from Waverly. Then to use over top of those stars, I'm using these wood letters that spell out the word welcome and these ones are from Hobby Lobby and I'm painting all of the letters with the nautical color paint. Now it's time to start assembling everything together. I placed all of my three stained pieces of wood side by side and then to place on the back, I'm using just some popsicle sticks. So I placed the hot glue on the popsicle sticks and then placed it on the back side of all of my stained pieces of wood. This is just gonna ensure that all of the pieces of wood stay together. So I did just several of them along the back side. Then I'm taking my painted stars and I'm laying them out on the front of my wood pieces to get them all spaced like I want them to be before I start using my hot glue to attach them. Then on top of all of my wood stars, I'm going to be placing my painted letters to spell out the word welcome going down vertically. Now that I have all of my letters attached, I'm going to be creating my bow. For this, I'm using this patriotic ribbon from Joanne Fabrics and I'm cutting three different sizes. So I did a small short side that was probably about five inches in length, then I did a medium size that was probably about seven or eight inches and then I did a third size that was probably about a foot in length. Then I'm taking all three pieces and I'm hot gluing the two ends of them together to form circles. And like I said, I did this for all three of the pieces that I just cut. I'm then stacking those pieces going from largest to smallest and then I'm taking and just bunching those three pieces up in the middle and I'm using this navy jute twine from Dollar Tree and just wrapping it around the center of the bow several times and then tying a knot on the back to make sure that everything is nice and secure. Now I'm gonna be creating my tail ends for my bow. I cut a piece of ribbon that was probably, I don't know, between eight and 10 inches in length. I then folded it in half twice and then I'm cutting upward to create a V on the bottom of my ribbon. I'm then just bunching it up in the center and then tying a piece of that same navy jute twine around the center to make sure that it stays nice and tight and then hot gluing the bow in the center of the tail that I just created. I'm then attaching that bow at the top of my wood right above the W using some hot glue. Then for the very last step, I'm using some of my Java colored paint on a very small paintbrush and I'm just very lightly dry brushing this around all of the edges of my star to give them more of that rustic farmhouse look. Here is my welcome patriotic sign all finished. I ended up placing mine on my front porch, of course, and I will be using it for this 4th of July. Next is DIY number seven. For this one, I'm using this windmill from Dollar Tree. It did have a couple attachments, I think, originally on it, but I have removed those. And the first thing I'm doing to the windmill is painting two of the blades with my folk art chalk paint in the color nautical and then I'm doing two of the blades in the Tuscan red color and two more of the blades in the Waverly paint in plaster. So I did two of the blue next to each other and then I did a red white and then I did another red white. Those ones were rotating. 
Then I'm going to be using this star stencil to place on the blades that are painted blue. So I just randomly placed these stars over top and just very quickly painted on some of the stars in the plaster colored paint. Then I'm using one of these wooden plaques from Michaels and I'm painting the entire piece with that plaster color paint. I'm also going to be using this scrap piece of wood and I'm painting this one with that same plaster color as well. Next I'm using some hot glue on the inside of the plaque to attach my windmill. I just did a very, very generous amount of hot glue just to hold it into place and I did hold the windmill in place until the hot glue fully set so that it didn't move around. I'm then adding my scrap piece of wood onto the front of my plaque. Next, I'm cutting a couple pieces of this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be having them placed inside of the plaque here. And I did have all of the ends of my ribbon all frayed out just to give it that more rustic look. I'm also going to be using some of these fireworks. These did come in a pack from Hobby Lobby. The ones that are painted blue with the white stripes, I'm going to be leaving those painted just like they are. But the ones that have the red stripes on them, I wanted the exact color red that I used on the windmill. So I'm painting over all of them with my plaster color paint. And then once that paint has dried, I'm going to be adding that Tuscan red. And I'm going to be just really messily and free handed just painting on the stripes myself and I did only a couple stripes not as many as what they originally had and this way they'll look a little bit more rustic and go with the theme that I want for this piece. I did not really like the sparkly tops that were on the fireworks originally and I tried pulling them out but they were in there really well so I just cut them down as much as I possibly could and then I'm using some more of this paper rope. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's from Dollar Tree. I cut really, really small pieces of it and then I'm just hot gluing those right on the tops of all of my fireworks. I then took some of my Java colored paint and I'm dry brushing this along the base of this piece to give it more of that farmhouse rustic look. And then I also took that same Java color around all of the edges of the white pieces on my windmill. I'm using this America word cutout. This one did come in a pack of different like 4th of July themed words from Hobby Lobby. I'm just using some hot glue on the back side of the word and then I'm attaching it to the very front of this piece. Then for the last step, I'm placing all of my painted fireworks inside. And here's the project all finished. Again, another easy, affordable project. And this one was super fun for me to create. Moving right along into DIY number eight. For this one, I'm using this unfinished wooden birdhouse. And this one is from Joanne Fabrics. And I did not want to have the little hanger at the top. So I'm just pressing it back through the house. And then I'm using some pliers just to pull it out. And then I'm going to be using some of this blue and white star paper and this is from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to be using this on the roof of my house. So I'm just placing one side of the roof onto the back side of the paper and just tracing around and then I am going to be cutting it out a little bit larger than what I had marked just so that I give myself a little bit of extra room. So after I had the first piece cut, I'm then just taking that piece as a guide to cut a second piece. I'm then painting some Mod Podge right on the top roof of my house and I'm just doing one side at a time. So I did this side first. So I just painted the Mod Podge on and then placed the paper over top of that and just made sure I pressed out any bubbles that were on here. And as you can see, the paper is a little bit longer than the roof of the house. I then just folded it over around all of the edges. And then I'm taking my sandpaper and just sanding around all of the edges to give that paper a nice clean cut. I'm then doing the exact same thing to the other side of the roof. I'm painting on the Mod Podge, placing my paper over top of that, and then sanding away the edges. Then I'm taking my nautical color chalk paint and painting that around all of the edges of the roof. 
Next, I'm using this block from Hobby Lobby and I'm gonna be doing the same thing with the star paper as I did with the roof. I'm just placing it over my paper and tracing around it and I'm gonna be cutting that out just a little bit larger than what I traced. And I did that for four different um, times to go around all sides of my block. Then I did the same thing. I just painted on the Mod Podge and then the different sides of the paper. And then I did just use some sandpaper to sand away all of the edges around the paper and just get a nice clean cut. I'm using these two square pieces of wood and these I believe are either from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure, but you can get them at any craft store. And I'm hot gluing two of them together and this is going to be the base where I attach my house and I just wanted it to be a little bit thicker that's why I glued both of them together and then I'm painting the entire thing with the Tuscan red paint. Then I'm using that same Tuscan red color to paint the rest of my birdhouse and then I'm moving back to the base piece and I'm going to be painting on white stripes and for the color that I'm using it is Waverly in plaster and I'm hand painting these on and I want them to look really messy and rustic so that this birdhouse looks old and so yeah I just painted on a bunch of stripes and then I moved back to the birdhouse and I'm doing the same thing for that I'm painting on stripes just kind of in random places they don't have to be spaced out the exact same um, I like I said I wanted it to look really messy and rustic I did leave the front of my house without any stripes and I did paint around the edge of the door of the birdhouse and then the little stem that comes out and then I dry brushed around all of the windows and then I dry brushed around the roof and the edges of the house as well. Now that I have everything painted, it's time to start putting everything together. I just hot glued the base onto the block and then I hot glued my birdhouse right in the center of my block. And here is my rustic patriotic birdhouse all finished. This one is another great project for a tiered tray and it was super easy to do. Next up is DIY number nine. For this one, I'm using this eight inch wire wreath form from Dollar Tree. They do come in a two pack, but I'm using just the one today. And then I'm using this patriotic ribbon from Joanne Fabrics, as well as this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. Then to secure all of my ribbon, I'm gonna be using some of these little wires that I picked up in this tan color. First thing I'm doing is taking this patriotic ribbon and I'm cutting a strip that's probably about seven or eight inches in length. And then I'm using that first piece as a guide to continue cutting several more pieces that same length. I'm using several of these pieces for my wreath, so I need a bunch of them cut out. Then once I have them all cut out, I'm then folding my ribbon in half once, and then I'm folding it again in half going vertically and then cutting upward in a diagonal from the bottom of the ribbon up to make my ribbon have a V shape. I'm then cutting strips of this burlap ribbon. These ones I'm gonna be doing a little bit smaller. These ones were about five inches in length and I cut several of these as well. And then once I had them all cut out, I did the same thing. I folded them in half horizontally and then again vertically and then just cut from the very bottom of the ribbon going up to form that V shape on the bottom. Then I took my wires and I did cut them in half before I started doing this, but I'm gonna be wrapping them around the bottom and the middle wire. I did three around the middle wire and then three around the bottom wire as well. And I did like stagger them out a little bit. I'm then taking a strip of my patriotic ribbon and I'm just bunching it into the center and then I'm placing that in the center of my wire and then wrapping the wire around the center of my ribbon to secure it into place. I'm then taking a piece of the burlap ribbon and doing the same thing, bunching it in the center, only this time I'm placing it right in the center of where I have my patriotic ribbon and then just using those wires to secure that one in place as well. I then continued to do all of those same steps over and over again until I had my entire wreath covered with all of my wires and both of my ribbons. Then once all of my wreath is covered, I'm just taking those wires that are sticking out and I'm wrapping them and just tucking them on the back of my wreath so that you can't see them. And then I'm just going through and fixing my ribbon a little bit 
Both ribbons do have wires in them, so it's really easy to form them just the way that you want. For a little detail on my wreath, I'm gonna be adding this July 4th word cutout. This one did come from that pack of cutouts from Hobby Lobby, and the red color is nice, but I wanted it to pop a little bit more, so I'm painting the top of this with the plaster color chalk paint. And then I'm also gonna be adding these two stars. These ones are also from Hobby Lobby, and I'm doing just the blue and white ones. So the first thing I'm doing is just using some hot glue to attach both the white and the blue stars. And then right underneath those stars, I'm hot gluing my word cutout that says July 4th. And here is my wreath all finished. I love the colors all together on this wreath and it was really easy to do. It only took me probably about 15 minutes to create it. So I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Now for the 10th and final DIY for today, I'm gonna be using this wood shutter and this one came from the Target Dollar Spot a while back. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is using my plaster color paint and I'm painting the second strip from the side that color and then also the one on the end all the way to the right. Once I have those two strips painted, I'm then using my Tuscan red color and I'm painting the other two remaining strips. Then for the top pieces of wood, I'm painting those with the plaster color as well. Once all of that paint has dried, I wanted to add a really rustic look to this. So I'm taking some of my Java colored paint on a really thin paintbrush and I'm painting that in all of the cracks between the slats on this piece of wood. Now it got a little more like rusticy than what I had originally planned and I was just gonna scrap this but I decided to just keep going and working with it to see if it could be something that I'd like and I'm really glad I did. I'm also gonna be using three different size wood stars for this. I'm gonna be doing the largest star in the Tuscan red color. I'm doing the middle star in the plaster color and then the smallest star I'm doing in the nautical color. I'm also gonna be using this welcome word cutout. This one is from Joanne Fabrics and I'm painting it with the nautical color chalk paint. Next, I'm taking some burlap fabric and I'm cutting that down to where I can wrap the fabric going around the front of this piece and then the bottom, I wanna have that wrap going, or wrapping up behind the piece, if that makes sense. So I'm just using some hot glue to attach the fabric along the back side, and then for the bottom, I did just fold the little pieces a little bit so that they looked a little bit nicer and more put together when you look at the piece from the front. I am gonna be adding some greenery and flowers. I use these little white flowers from Hobby Lobby in so many of my projects because I just love them so much. So I just took some of them off of the stem and then I placed them inside of the burlap. And then I'm also using some eucalyptus stems and these ones are from Hobby Lobby. And I just put those around all of the little white flowers. Then it was time to attach my welcome word. I used hot glue on the back side of that and just attached it at the very top of my sign. I'm then adding two pieces of this navy colored jute from Dollar Tree. I just cut two strips of it and then I'm wrapping it so that it goes around the front and then I'm securing the ends of the uh, jute on the back side of my sign using some hot glue. Before I add on my stars, I wanted to add a little bit more distressing to them. So for the white one, I used the Java colored paint and I dry brushed that all around the edges of the star. And then I used my plaster color on the Tuscan red one. I just dry brushed that color around the edges. And then I hot glued the red one on first, then the white one over top of that. And then the small blue one, I used that same plaster color to distress it and then attached it right in the center of my white star. And this is what my piece looks like all finished. I love how this one turned out. I'm so glad I did not scrap it and I kept going because it ended up turning out so much better than I envisioned. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that I was able to give you some inspiration to create some really great 4th of July decor this year. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. 
please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And if you did hear any background noises, that's because I do have a family and my son and a new puppy were home. So I was trying my best, but if you heard any background noises, I'm really sorry about that. Thank you so much for watching.